All right. It's all yours, all right. Lindsay. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for, for letting me jump on this morning um, to, to share a little bit of knowledge with you. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Google My Business. So um, it's one that's been very a very hot topic. Um, and it's been, um, I think, something that everybody, if you don't already have it or um, use it or you, you have it, but you don't know how to use it, all those kind of things, um, it's super important, I think, to for businesses moving forward. So I will share my screen and we will jump right into the presentation. Maybe. There we go. Minimize this for Pardon me. You can never have this up and running before, not with Canva, unfortunately, but I love Canva. So as I said, we're going to talk about Google My Business. And the best way to put Google My Business is it is now your yellow pages of the day. So if you're, um, I'm aging myself, but if you're like me, you remember um, getting that big book on your doorstep, and then you would search for businesses and contact information through that. Um, and that's why everybody would name their businesses starting with an A. Um, so that way you'd be the first um, couple pages. But nowadays, those are long gone, no longer delivered, at least not to my house. I don't know, maybe some people still get them. Um, there is a still like an online version, but really the, the new yellow pages of today is a Google My Business page. So that's why I always say that it's super important to at least just register your business on a Google My Business um, page. Um, there are, um, we'll go through all the tips and tricks exactly of it, um, but just think about what you do when you go search for business, you probably, eight out of 10 of you visit Google and type in the business name and then just hope that something pops up and you can just call it from there or visit their website or something because you don't want to even type in a website anymore, right? Nobody even wants to, <laughs> even if you know the business's name, you're probably just going to Google it and click the first thing that pops up, which hopefully would be a Google My Business page or like a map, which we'll kind of talk about a little bit as well. So again, why do you use it? It's free. There is no charge. There's no costs. Might as well set it up. 86% um, of people use Google. So there's other things, you know, Chrome, Safari, there's other platforms, um, but the mass majority of people use Google. So um, once you set up a Google My Business, it can help you rank um, up there in Google. So like even outside of a, a map search or an actual listing, it can just help you rank. Um, and then it just helps those potential clients find you if they're searching, if they don't know your business and they're just searching for a realtor in the area, it will help people find you um, easier than just a, even what than a website. Um, it is, does not um, replace your current website it just enhances it. Um, it's still always recommended to, to keep your current website and all that sort of stuff. And um, in this Google My Business listing, you would list that website as a point of reference. Um, and that's where Google can pull information from or that sort of thing, but it doesn't replace it, just enhances it. So always keep that in mind. Um, it, whoa, it didn't take any of my changes. <laughs> anyway, it's information at their fingertips. So um, the second they Google realtor in my area and your name pops up over here on the side, um, it will, um, automatically pull in your phone number, your name, your website, your address, all those kind of things. And so it's really, like I said, that, um, yellow page listing right there, handy one click, and they can do what they need with it. They can go to your website. They can get directions. They can call you, um, it's really easy for you guys in, in terms of even putting your cell phones in, um, in order for them to, they can even, in some regards, message you, like send a message to your phone straight from this um, ad, mm -hmm. right? So um, it's that one-stop shop. Now um, we get on average, probably, I would say, 30% of people who continue onto our website, that means that they were looking for something other than those basic information. So that's not a huge amount. So think about like, we're at least giving those people enough information at the forefront that they are getting what they need 
to contact us. Um, we do get a lot of um, directions, a lot of phone um, clicks. Um, they call our front desk, that sort of thing. We have a little different situation as a corporate office. They have to call our front desk and then um, get transferred to a department that they need. But at the same time, again, it's super easy that they can all do it right from this listing. So as you are thinking about, do I have one? Um, do, do I need one? I should set one up, all those kind of things. Before you even go down the path of, of st starting your Google profile um, and your Google My Business, Google yourself. Um, it can happen and it happens more often. If you think about it, it happens more often with like franchise businesses or things like that. But think about if maybe um, a past broker set you up with one that you don't even know about or things like that, that you just never know. Um, but I always recommend you Google yourself. 56% of people haven't claimed a profile. And what that means is that Google, if somebody's um, Googling McDonald's at you know two intersections, right? And there is one there, but that franchise hasn't started the Google My Business page. Google's gonna be like, there's a business there, obviously, like we're just going to create a profile for it. We're just gonna say, yes, there's a business there. Here's the basic information. It's at this street and this is what we could find as far as phone number and website, right? Google's just gonna do that because Google's trying to provide the best service to their clients, AKA us searchers, right? So they will create a profile just to help their people out in searching. Um, it doesn't happen as often, with like independent business people like us, like we're not, you know, people aren't Googling us so much that Google's like, fine, I'll create a profile for you. But that doesn't mean that a past business hasn't or that you didn't start one, you know, years ago and then completely forget about it because it wasn't as big and you didn't know what to do with it. Um, so it could live out there. Um, and the one of the worst things that can happen is you to have two of them because then, Google's going to get confused when they start to try to, when somebody's Googling you and they're trying to search, well, who's right and who's wrong? And I don't know. So I always say, just do a little search, make sure that that doesn't pop up and you're not like, oh, wait, where did this come from? Um, if that happens, if somebody created one with, you know, before you or some, or Google created one for you or anything like that, all you have to do is say, claim it. I'm going to claim that as my business right? They, there's no, um, there's nothing negative. Like it's not like, oh, how do I even get into it? You just claim it. It usually sends a message to whoever created it. They say, yes, you can have it. If Google created it, they're like, great. Finally, somebody claimed this business. Here you go. Have, have at it. Here, have all the access. <laughs> um, but if not, if you Google yourself and there's no sign of you, um, well, hopefully there's a sign of you, but <laughs> if there's no Google my business, then you're going to go to, oops, that went fast, <laughs> google.com forward slash business, right? Um, after you set one up, it's really a lot easier to get one if you go to the little, if you're using Google, the little nine dots up in the corner, you can just pop that down. You don't have to type this in every time. Um, it'll just kind of become part of your Google pieces. So um, now as you're setting it up, it's going to walk you through an I don't, it's hard for me as I already have an account. I have like a couple of accounts I've tried to, <laughs> to like walk you through. It's very, very, very self-explanatory. It will start with step one, name, step two, address, step three, phone number, um, you know, website, all those ba very, very basic business things. It's going to walk you step by step through each one of those. Now, as you do that, there's some, I always say, this is very, very, very important to remember. It's called name, address, phone number, NAP. Um, if you want to rank higher, this is always my tip um, in Google. If that means if you want to be higher in the map, if when, when somebody goes, you know, services near me, if you just want to be rank, rank higher as when somebody is searching realtor in general, um, Google is still a computer. It's still going and searching all the interwebs <laughs> for you, right? For a realtor near me or for this specific person or that sort of thing. It still has a very hard time deciphering if I put that I'm Lindsay L. Magri or I'm Lindsay Magri, it's going to be like, wait a second, is that the same person? I don't know. I can't guarantee it. I need to do the best for my clients. So I'm not going to say that's the same person just to be safe. 
I'm going to go to the next person who I can verify is the same person. So across the board, and we do do a, um, we can do one on ones, we can help with any, however you want to do a social audit to make sure that across the board, you are as close to the same person on every social profile you have. So that way Google says, yes, this is Lindsay Magri. I can ver verify it. I'm putting her up at the top, right? And that is down to the, when you say, when you put in your address in all your different social places, are you writing street out or are you putting ST? Are you putting a dot after ST? Are you not? Like, I mean, they get very, very specific and it's only to help Google be faster and verify that it really is you. So if you, in the phone number, if you do the area code in, you know, parentheses, or do you do dots, or it just helps Google process all that information faster and more accurately. So um, always make sure to take that into consideration. And when it comes to company name, like all, obviously you guys are all realtors, make sure that when you're entering your company name, that if you go Lindsay L. Magri, comma, realtor, right? Or if you do um, Lindsay L. Magri, comma, real estate agent, um, that I'm calling myself the same thing on Google My Business as I'm calling myself on Facebook, as I'm calling myself on Instagram. Now I'll take into consideration that some places have less character space than others. So again, just get it as close as possible, right? Um, I'm not just going to be El Magri on one and to save space. I'll probably take off like real estate agent on Instagram to save space or, you know, and put that in the description. There's ways to kind of still play with that, um, but just try as, as much as possible to get it the same. Um, and we're also, we're going to move into service areas and services that will also help you rank as well, but make sure that those things are the same. Now, as you fill this out throughout the Google My Business setup, it will, um, sorry, it will, at the very end, it will ask you to verify. If you are one of the lucky people, which they're trying to move more into this, if you're one of the lucky people, you will get to verify by a phone number. Um, and that means literally they'll give you a phone call. They're going to give you a code right over the phone. You're going to enter that code in and you are verified. Um, they're trying to move more toward that because of so many people not working in offices, um, but not, we still have not seen everybody get that option. So <laughs> unfortunately, if you're one of the few who get the option and it's basically, it's the address, um, they mail you a postcard with that code on it that you have to enter. They say the postcard can take one to three weeks. Um, Unfortunately, if you work in a, if obviously a lot of us are working remote, we, we don't go into the office all the time. We're, you know, we don't work out of the office, um, but we have that physical address um, that we put down because it's associated with our business. Um, just make sure that if there's a receptionist or somebody working there, just tell them, do not throw away any of my mail. <laughs> make sure I get every piece of it. So. Um, because that you'll need that code to verify. And once you're verified, then that's when the SEO and the Google ranking and stuff like that can really happen. So it doesn't mean it can't happen before, but again, Google's going like, oh, this is a true business. It's verified. I can put them at the very top. So as you're filling it out, after you're done, you're going to have a page that kind of looks, um, this is a Google My Business like um, dashboard. So you'll have, this is your left side. We'll have all these options. Your home is just basically your dashboard, which tells you your stats, all those kind of things. Um, but under the info section, there's gonna be called an area, it's called service area. This is very important. This isn't, you can put an area, you can put one area in setup. In setup, it's gonna be like, what area do you service? And you're gonna say, um, I service Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, Cause you're gonna be really broad and all that sort of stuff. Um, but after that, you're going to come in here and this is super important to do some service areas. So this is where if you're doing any sort of postcard mailings or any targeted marketing to different zip codes, make sure you come in here and add that zip code right here to select added areas. You can do it by cities, postal codes. Um, you could be super broad and just be like, oh, I'm Nebraska. But my recommendation is to 
give Google something to work with, right? So give them some zip codes. You're not solely restricted to those zip codes, but it'll help them. Again, Google's trying to provide a service to their clients, us searchers, and they want to give that, those searchers the best possible answer. So if they're looking for um, you know, a specific realtor and a specific zip code in Lincoln, this will help them find you and put you up there, right? And I think you can have up to like 20 different zip codes, right? Um, 20 different cities, those kind of things. Um, and you can always change and add those. That's why I'm like, if you're doing a, like this month, I'm going to target this zip code, make sure to go in and add that zip code in there. Because one, the people have got your postcard. Then on top of it, again, people don't, even if you put your website big and bold on that postcard, chances are they're going to Google your name rather than type in your, your website address, right? So we just want to make sure that you're going to pull up when they're typing that in. And Google knows where their um, internet is. They know what zip code they're searching in. So it's just going to help them uh, rank you up there. So, and again, 20 of them, utilize them, put 20 in. It doesn't restrict you 100%. It just says like, these are areas like that I'm really good at knowing, or I, you know, I work in, and we all have those areas that we really don't want to drive to. So why list it, right? <laughs> Maybe it's you know, an hour from where we live, and we're just like, God, to drive out there and show a house, to drive back, uh, I don't, I don't think I want to do it. So just leave it off and select the ones around you. <laughs> I always say, and I do a branding class, and I always say, go speak to and target the ideal customer. And this is just one way to do it. The ideal customer lives in these zip codes. That doesn't mean I'm going to take, not take somebody outside of this area. This is just my ideal client. This is who I would love to work with 100% of the time, live in these zip codes because it means less driving for me, but I'll drive anywhere because business is business, all right? So then we have the services, which is very, very much like locations, um, like service areas. This is your services. Um, we kind of liken it to a hashtag. You don't just, you don't have to put a hashtag, but it's kind of in that, that realm of things. So under the same thing, you're going to be again, under your info tab, there's going to be a place called services. And then it's going to have an area with little edit. And you're going to have the same type of thing that you can do with, uh, your service areas at the very beginning of your setup. You're probably going to put in realtor, um, real estate agent as your service as your main service. Again, you get one that's going to live as the main one under here, but then you get all these additional. And again, I think you get an extra 20 different services you can use. Think outside the box on these and think what somebody's going to Google when they're searching for you. Yes. The two most common is realtor and real estate agent, right? So um, make sure to put those, whatever one you list as your main one, make sure the other one is listed as your other services, right? But then you can think about other things that um, I'm a first time homebuyer consultant, like other things that maybe somebody might be um, Googling, right? Because again, this is helping Google match you with the person that's actually doing the searching. So you can get very creative right here. Um, and then actually even underneath each one of these, um, which you don't see like here, but it just actually, it lives in your actual, once you click into this little edit button, um, you'll see that under each one of those, you could also add a description. And I say, if you put like first time home buyer um, agent, let's just say, and then underneath that, you write a little description of what that means. I really love to help for those buying their home for the first time find the home that fits their needs, you know, like whatever it is, but think about, again, all you're doing is trying to put words in there that somebody might Google. Um, what I don't recommend and what Google won't like is if you put the same, if you just cut and paste that same description underneath each one of these things, um, cause then they'll think you're trying to work the system. So you definitely just have to write out a different description for each one. Um, and I always just say, use the uh, words that go with that title that would help in a search. So um, again, like think of it like a hashtag. I, I do first time, I do um, 
you know, second homes, the, whatever your specialty is or whatever, and you might do them all and that's fine. You have 20 of them to fill out. So have fun with it. <laughs> okay, the other big piece of Google My Business and is the reviews. This matters to Google. Um, Google wants to provide the best option for their client. Your reviews tell them, okay, they're a real business. I've checked their name, their address, their website. I've done all my background research. This is who they say they are. And they're a real person, a real business. I'm going to show them. And on top of that, they are getting great reviews from their clients. That just adds and that just helps you move right up, right? So um, the, the final piece of getting on the map is that you're close proximity to the person. Again, that's where those zip codes come into play um, because yes, you have your business address, but I work outside that everybody, so many businesses work outside that business address. So that's why they did those service areas. So make sure you're filling that out because if somebody's searching in a different zip code than your address, they would match up, right? So those are the main pieces that get you shown on those map searches, on Google search in general, um, is having these pieces all filled out and structured, right? So when you have reviews, don't panic, one, if you have a bad review, right? This person um, has, you know, all these uh, great reviews. It has one, two, it looks like probably one, two, probably three or four ones. Um, you leave them in there because we're all human. If you have nothing, and at first you might have nothing but fives, and that's fine because they'll everybody think of you as a consumer when you go look at reviews, right? Um, I'm going to say, oh, 68 reviews, oh, a lot of it, and they have one or two. That's probably just that must happen, bad experience by somebody. But I might go check out the top uh, top five, and I might check out the one just to see if the one is something. Um, this person said negative things to my daughter. I'd be like, well, maybe I don't want to work with somebody who would say negative things to my daughter. I don't, you know, like you would use your judgment as a consumer to say, is that one negative one worth me not using them, but when they have all these fives, right? Chances are one or two bad are not going to make me stop using somebody, right? Unless that whole, because I'm just going to probably think that that person had a, the person that's reviewing them had a bad day you know, was just out for spite to try to, you know, I'm going to put a bad review because they were just mean to me, whatever. Um, but it still makes it look human. It makes it look like, okay, I allow these people to voice their opinions. I'm not going to censor them. I'm not going to do anything. So what I always do is just always say to respond to that one, right? And just say, I'm so sorry about your experience. Please reach out if we can do something to remedy it, you know? always try to steer people offline on a review, right? Get them out of, uh, of doing any back and forth. If somebody really wants to, is just doing it to be super negative and bring you down, they're probably going to try to keep the engagement on the actual review site. Um, but I just always be like, we would love to take this offline. No, no need to sit there and hash it out back and forth. Um, so reviews are super important. Take the good and the bad. As long as, for, if there's some reason they're all bad, then you can start censoring. But I don't think anybody here will have that issue. Nobody really does. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that you're commenting and responding. Okay, Lindsay, we have a couple questions or do you wanna do yeah. them after we're done? Oh, sure, we can We can go ahead and take them now. That way they're relevant. And... Okay, well, this one actually, I, he said he was sleeping for a while, but um, mm -hmm. it is, um, so is it better to actually live zip codes instead of cities or can you include both? You can include both. Um, if you, you have 20 spaces to fill, right? So if you're one of, if you're okay with being broad enough to list 20 cities around, you know, um, of all the suburbs and things like that, that your work, um, and you don't mind if I actually truly got a client, you know, in the city that's going to take me with traffic an hour to drive to, you know, that's fine. Um, my biggest suggestion is if you do any sort of targeted marketing, so we all know that like EDDMs are popular, postcard, you know, I'm going to go canvas a neighborhood, I'm going to really work this neighborhood. If you're doing that, 
I always recommend to put at least that zip code in there. The city that it's in could help, but when you're targeting it, like Google's going to be like, oh, they really service this zip code, right? And then they're just going to see you with, because you just put that postcard, they'll go Google you. And then Google's like, yes, they'd service that zip code specifically, right? It's just, it's just a, a perk in that situation. So I always just say, do that. If you're spending the money on any sort of postcards or things like that, add that zip code in because it's just going to help, right? It's just going to make Google think that zip code she really does. Um, it gives, I mean, the computer that's running Google has to, is already super fast, but think about how fast it has to work in order to give those answers to the searcher so fast that any way you can give them that extra information just uh, it helps. So, all right. The next question is, um, so if you have five stars and really no other reviews, does that affect traffic? even though that's the situation? No, nope, it doesn't. Um, it's still your reviews. Um, the, the things that I always just recommend when getting reviews is don't stress about getting a whole bunch at once. You, you don't want somehow, because obviously when you set this up, you're going to want to go ask a whole bunch of people, hey, I just started my Google My Business. Will you leave me a review? One, it's great. Ask them. Um, as I have here on the screen, 70% of people will leave a review when asked. Um, a lot of people won't go do it on their own. Um, they don't think about it, right? Um, you either have the one or two people, the one who had the most amazing experience and just need to shout out from the rooftop. That person will leave a review. Great. We love that. Unfortunately, the person that had the most negative experience, whether it's just their own personal feelings, you know, like it has really is that it was them, it wasn't you, <laughs> but that person will also leave a review. So you have always have these two huge spectrums. The people in the middle that had a great experience, um, it was just like, yay, thank you so much. You helped me buy a house, but they don't think about it as like, oh my God, it was, you know, amazing and tremendous. They're just not those kind of people. They'll leave it. They just don't think about doing it, right? So one, ask them. But when you ask, if you all of a sudden get, you know, let's just say 10, I, 10 might be a little on the low side, but if you say, if you got 15 reviews in one day and they were all five-star reviews in one day, Google thinks you're paying somebody for the review. They think you are spamming them for the reviews. Like they might think that they're not real reviews um, because in Google's mind, they're like, how, why would you get 15 reviews in one day? And why would they all be five stars? Could because Google's like, I don't ever see that. The chances of that happening are very slim. And so that's why they think it would be a scam or a spam if that did. Um, so even if you send out, we send them out all the time and we just say to every closed loan here, review us. And we still probably get one to two a day. Like if you think about it, like, cause it's not, people are going to be like, oh yeah, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it next week. Or you know, so not everybody's going to go run and rush and do it that second you send them that email. So don't panic um, that that would be the case. But do know that um, you want to never pay people, even reward them. Hey, review me and you'll be entered to get a gift card. Um, if they ever mention that or if, any, if it ever comes out or again, that that can tend to have the reaction of people going right then and there to fill it out. Um, and then that gets flagged as spam. Um, but at first you're probably, cause you, the first people you're going to go to when you do this is probably your closest sphere of influence, right? People that, you know, will leave you a good one. Um, so having five stars only at the very beginning is not, it's not a negative thing at all. It's great. Um, I'm just saying like, definitely as time goes on and you have this out there and now you have your profile that people can find via search. Now people are going to be more inclined that if they had a negative experience, some people don't like to, you know, it's the, it's the wonders of a computer and being behind the screen. And I don't have to tell you I had a bad experience, but I'm going to go tell Google I had a bad experience, right? It just now gives people that outlet. So those negatives have a tendency to come up. And like I said, it's usually like the one or two um, that will pop up, but um you just respond to them, say, I'm so sorry, that was your experience. Let's take it offline and let it be. 
Um, I wouldn't try to erase it. I wouldn't try to fight it with Google and say, remove it, anything like that. Just um, because sometimes that makes people look like, oh, you can't even take criticism or you think you're perfect or, you know, are the other five stars, you know, negative and you just put them out there as positive, you know, like it makes people <laughs> just start to question the whole review. So um, don't stress about having all five stars. That's great. Um, I just want to warn you that, that once you become public, <laughs> people, you know, definitely have a, a tendency to, to voice their opinions publicly behind a computer. <laughs> All right. The next question is, are star reviews as good as actual words and comments? Yes. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. Some people um, will just leave that, that, that five star um, to Google. A star is the same as comments. The comments help the consumer, right? So for Google, they're like, okay, this person got eight, you know, eight, five stars. This is great. I'm going to show them. It's the consumer who then will go through and read what this, you know, service is. Um, but again, a lot of times, I mean, if we've all done it, we've all searched, you know, I do it a lot for restaurants and I just go through and sometimes I just look at the stars and I'm like, uh, they have a four and a half when they've had 5,000 reviews, that's a good place to go, right? To keep that level of service with 5,000 people saying something, right? Now, if you think about the opposite, like, oh, this person has two stars and only eight reviews, you're like, ooh. Like so far, nobody's really having a great experience at this place. So it, it kind of, the star rating matters in terms of, I'm just going to go down for a quick look, right? Five stars, eight reviews. Everybody's loved them. They're great. I'll, I'll click on it and I'll, I'll actually go into it, right? You set first initial thing you look at, you go down the stars and you're like, mm, okay, you know. So again, it takes a little while to, to get these, reviews in and populated. And sometimes I want you to know that if somebody leaves your review, it doesn't mean it automatically shows that second. Um, Google does do their computer work on the back end just to see um, if they think it's real and then they'll post it on your site. So just know that it won't be automatic. Okay, the next question is, my reviews aren't showing up. What could be the problem or what can I try to do to remedy this? Yeah, we, we, there are some... I will say there's sometimes there's glitches in, in Google's world. Um, it, again, it depends on how long ago they um, left the review. We had an instance, I think it was probably about four or five months ago where um, one of our LOs had the same issue and none of them showed up for about a month or two. So it was literally 100%. We just a glitch in the system. Of course, we couldn't really prove that outside because it's really hard to get a hold of people <laughs> in these social worlds. Um, but that they did eventually show up. If for some reason that you had four or five people leave a review like within an hour, let's just say, um, it, it does sometimes flag them as false. That's why I always say like, especially when you're first starting out, ask one or two people the next couple of days, ask another one or two people, try to like slowly leak it in out there. Um, for that reason, I don't, want anybody to be like, well, I went and blasted everybody and said, you know, um, fill out my review. And then somehow everybody decided to do it all at once. And then Google's like, wait a second. Nope. Um, my thing is you'd think that they knew when you started your page and that you're trying to build it out and stuff like that. But from them, they're trying to protect. Do you care us. if I just ask, I'm the person that asked that question. So I yeah. just got Google business account set up. And it was probably about two months ago that I asked for some reviews, but there wasn't like a ton of them. Okay. I want maybe one or two a day. Um, my biggest thing is I'm wondering if behind the scenes, like something doesn't match from like one profile to another profile, even though it says it's all verified. If there's something little that I could tweak behind the scenes, because I'd hate to keep referring people to make this review and they just never... No, nothing ever shows up and that's kind of a review wasted. Yeah. Um, so the couple questions is, I would say, are you linking them directly to your Google account when you ask to leave a review or are you leaving it to them to Google you and find you and leave a review? So I get that link that Google okay. gives you and then I send that to them either in an email or a text or whatever. Okay, good. Because I always say that's the best way to do it for everybody else on the phone call. There is, when you go into your Google account, 
there's going to be a place for reviews. And then it, there's a little link that says, ask for reviews, send them that link rather than leave it to them to try to Google you and find you. And um, again, those multi-steps plus maybe finding the wrong person and leaving it with the wrong, you know, so always use that link. Um, in your account, I would double check that you can't like in the back end see them, that they're not just posting in, out there, but that you can't see them. Um, it shouldn't hinder, once you're verified and they're using that link, that shouldn't hinder those, those reviews from being seen. Okay. So at the end of this, if you want to give me, I, I have, I have my contact information on this last, on the last slide here, um, shoot me an email and let me, I will, we will work with you on making sure we get these reviews. Cause I can do some digging, um, with some of my groups that I'm in and see if anybody else is continuing to have the problem that we had three months ago. So, okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cause you should be able to see them, especially using the link and your accounts verified. Sometimes if your account's not verified, again, Google's like, I don't know if they're real. And so I might should I connect these two together. Right. But it sounds like you have yours all set up correctly. So it shouldn't be happening. You should be seeing your reviews. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh -huh. That's all the questions we have for now. So go about your business. <laughs> no, this is great. I love it. Um, again, 70 people just ask for the reviews. Sometimes you have to remind them and then reply to those reviews. So take the time to, um, all this is run off of a Gmail account. So I didn't mention that in the beginning. So if you don't have one, you have to create one. That is the only part that I'm like, I get it. They want you in their system and stuff like that. But sometimes I completely forget to check that Gmail where then they sent me that, hey, you got a new review. <laughs> so if, if nothing else, you don't have to check the actual Gmail account. Just make sure to check your Google My Business account or Google yourself every once in a while and see if you have a new review or something like that. Just so, or go into the Google My, your Gmail, have any of those emails auto forwarded to the actual email you really use, just so you're notified when somebody does review, leave you a review. So that way you can reply and say, thank you. Right. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure doing business with you. Again, that interaction helps not only Google, it helps the consumer, everybody involved that, you know, you're part of the story, right? Whether, and if it's negative, like I said, reply, take it offline. So. So photos and videos, um, Google can run, and I say can run just like any other social platform. You can do posts. You can do um, video posts, photo posts. You can do specials and ads and boosts and, you know, click here to, to get some. You can do all those kind of things on Google My Business. Um, it's not necessary, right? It is not necessary because if you've ever gone to a Google My Business page, which we've all probably been to at least one restaurant or one, you know, store down the street we were trying to find directions to, it is hard to find you have to scroll down to look at any of the posts. Um, so it's not necessary. Caveat to what is necessary. Necessary pictures to include. Please include a logo of your business, a headshot of you. If you have a physical location and you get and you invite people to go to that physical location and you do business out of that physical location, a picture of the front of the building. Because again, we often use this as our direction. So we're gonna to go to the Google account and we're gonna say directions, but I'm going to verify I'm at the correct place with that picture in the listing, right? You're like driving, especially you're driving around going, sweet number what, where am I? Okay, oh, this looks like I'm in the right place. This looks like the building, great. Okay, I'm looking for that logo on the building. Okay, check. And then I go inside and I'm looking for now the person. And as I always say in my branding one, Please don't catfish anybody. Please make sure that picture that you're putting on here is the picture of the person they're actually going to see and meet in person. <laughs> so make sure that those three photos are in there. It will allow you to tag them as that, as the logo, as an office, as your headshot um, as well. And then, like I said, you don't have to use this as a other social platform where you're posting all the time. 
What I like to say is, again, just make sure Google knows you're still in business. Make sure your address is always correct, your website, your phone number, your name. Um, and so then make sure your photos are correct. If your logo changes, if the building changes, anything like that, always make sure all that's correct. Then try to maybe add a photo of a house you have for sale or something um, interesting, even if it's an office culture thing, or I went to, you know, like something basically to tell Google at least quarterly, add a new picture in to say, hey, I exist. I'm still here. I'm still relevant. Don't forget about me. Right. It, Google doesn't expect you to be actually posting on this, you know, once a day, like Facebook or something, but it does want to make sure that you're current and you're, and you are somebody they should show. Now, other people, unfortunately, unlike other sites, can add pictures of your business to your, they can say, hey, this, and think about it at a restaurant, right? Like I took a picture of my meal. This was a meal I got from Taco Bell. Great. I, um, I, I tagged, basically at that point, I've tagged Taco Bell in it. So Google says, here, this goes with this Taco Bell, right? If, if everything, if anything is completely false and you're like, that does not represent my company, I don't want that, you can say, you know, please remove this picture. This does not, um, it does take a little while. Again, it's run by computers, not people. So um, it takes for them a little verification to, to remove that, but um, you do have that option. Otherwise you can say, hey, that just proves that people are doing business with me. So I'm gonna leave it up and I'm a real person and they can tag me in pictures all they want. Um, so know that that is how that happens. Um, again, like I said, once you have this, if then you want to move on to any sort of, I always recommend if then if you ever go venture down the path of um, Google ads, um, Google listing ads are super popular in the world of real estate right now. This platform helps those ads just in general. Again, it's a full circle um, with Google and saying who you are as a person and that they can verify. So um, I always just 100% recommend that, that you take, you know, it's going to probably be about a 30 minute to an hour, depending on how much information you have super handy. It should only take about 30 minutes, but sometimes if you really want to go into the service areas and really go dig deep and, and do all that, um, I, it would probably take about an hour. So um, any other questions? Yeah, Connie had one and her question was, um, the replies are all public, correct? Yes. Yep. That's the replies that you put on any review are all public. So that's why if it's a negative one, you don't want to start the back and forth there. You say, hey, I would love to take this offline. If you can, um, here's my email address. Send me your contact information and I'll get in touch with you, right? Like super, I'm very concerned about this review. I, I'm so sorry about your experience, but let's take this, you know, offline. So um, just because that way people see that you're trying to handle it, but they know that, you know, those situations can be sticky. So does anybody else have any questions? I, for one, am a huge reviewer. I read all the reviews from products that I buy. So <laughs> it is, I mean, that's honestly, I think it's probably even higher. I think it was, you know, 76% of people you know, were, would read at least one review before making a purchase. And I'm sure that that's even higher by now. Yeah. So it's just, uh, it's by nature. Like I said, I go, I'll Google a business and then I just go down. Okay. What are the reviews? How, you know, and I do my, my math. Okay. You've had, especially on Amazon, if you're, you know, when you're shopping, <laughs> I don't know how to pick a curling iron. I don't know which one. So I'm going to go review. Okay. You've had a thousand reviews, but you have three stars. You have, you know, 50 reviews, but they're all five stars. Okay. I'm going to go 50 reviews, five stars. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, we all do it. So yeah. just it's human nature. Yeah. Yep. So you just want to make sure that you have that information available for the consumer. This is who I am. And right now, if you're starting out and you have all five stars, great. Nice. Okay. Um, 
We do have a question. I recently set up my business profile and noticed I'm not able to set my name with as many characters as some existing business. Is there a way to change that or it, or is it changes in Google over time? Uh, with any social platform, you gotta love them. They love to just make changes. Uh, so you never know when those kind of things um, will come about. Um, my big thing is um, when setting up your business and using a name and thinking about how that name should match all the other platforms that you're on, make sure, um, and we know in the nature of this business, um, as much as we all love our co company at the moment, but doesn't mean that something doesn't going to change in, you know, six months, a year, two years down the road. Um, I always, unless you would, we've actually worked around our compliance and, and, and explain this situation to them. I would sometimes leave my, um, name out of it, the name of the company out of it and just put my name and realtor to one again, like you said, to save space because they do start to limit. You used to be able to put on Google, my business, you would see some people's title like names. And they're just like, they listed absolutely everything. They listed all those keywords in there. They'd be realtor slash real estate agent slash that, you know, they would list it all in there. Those people have been grandfathered in and they can have that, but now you are limited. Um, and if you can't even fit your name, I guess it depends on how long your name is, but if your name, uh, your company name and, you know, realtor or, cause at least realtor is shorter than real estate agent, right? Um, if you can't fit that, then they have probably made some adjustments again. Um, but I always just suggest that you leave your company out of it and you put that in the description. I currently work at blah, 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 blah. And I've had, you know, um, you do have a space. Um, it's usually, you can skip it in the initial setup because it, I always say, give it some time and thought in your description. Again, using SEO words, um, real estate agent, um, the time and experience you've had, the people you've helped, those kind of, you know, words. Um, using that um, will help uh, not need as much in your title, right? Um, plus, if you make that change in, in employment, <laughs> you don't have to worry about what did I list my name as? Do I, where do I have to change it? What do I have, you know, all those kind of like compliance issues that, that then arise with that. You will, you're always you, most likely you'll always be a real estate agent. So kind of keeping those two as your main and then making sure you list your place of business and licensing or whatever information is compliant in the description. That's what we've kind of been able to get away with because of that. We've had issues where on certain social platforms, you can't change your business name very often. So uh, it, can, it can become a challenge if you, if you jump places too many times. So um, we've gotten around being able to, to do that and just adding that in descriptions instead. Awesome, thank you so very, very much. Um, the one last thing is yes, I'm recording this and I will mm -hmm. send it out to everybody that wasn't able to attend or had to get off. So I just need about an hour or so to get it uploaded to our YouTube channel and you'll have it in your hot little hands yet today. So any yeah. more questions or comments? Lindsay, everybody loved you. They thank you, oh. thank you, thank you in the chat. So thank oh, you, thank well, you. Thank you, thank you for letting me be here. Oh, one and more like question. I said, oh yeah. <laughs> one more question. Where is the best place to learn about setting up a... Sorry, okay. that was my question I entered. It. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can, Katie. I just kind of started and where is a good place to go back and learn how to do the different things? Your talk was very valuable, but um, does Google itself help you out? I I just kind of got into it right now. Um, <laughs> hopefully get better, like what's the best way to write your business description and that type of stuff. Uh, Google it. <laughs> yes, there, there. Honestly, there are a lot of lot of options out there. Um, if you just, you know, obviously Google how to set up a profile. Um, there's uh, samples and things like that. But you can also reach out to us. We're happy to sit down and uh, I'm passionate about Google My Business and getting people up and, and running on this. So I'm always happy to sit down. Um, I have a counterpart at my office too, James Campoy, which I think talked to you guys last month. Um, and we both will be happy to just sit down and do a walkthrough 
um, of how to build it out. Um, you know, if you, if you, cause sometimes some people, I do this general overview for like people on the go and need to go. Some people are like, I'm never going to do it unless you sit with me. And like, we just walk through it step by step, um, and get it done. So if that's what it takes to make sure you get one of these, then that's what it'll take. And we'll happy to do that. Um, but you also can definitely, um, just kind of search in best, you know, description for Google, my business, they'll kind of give you the, the, the talking points about how to write it best for SEO. The other thing is, is sincerest form of flattery is copying somebody else's, right? Um, if we think about it, uh, nothing in this world is unique and original um, anymore. We've been around too long. So it's everybody's is some sort of a copy of somebody else's. So um, basically what that means is don't directly copy and just change your name. What that means is go research a couple of realtors that have a great, great out, um, Google realtor in your area and see who pops up first. Read the top, the first four or five of them and kind of see what they're doing and what they're saying about themselves. And that'll help you get a census of what to, how to and write yours, right? So it's always great to go research those other people. Again, what are they naming themselves? What service areas are they working in? What are they listing as their other services? You know, I'm gonna, I want to see how they're, they're obviously ranking up there. So let's, let's, you know, use what their success is. There's nothing says you can't. They probably got it from somebody else too. They probably did it, if not from another listing they saw from another class they took or something like that. So um, it's, it's a great research tool to, to do. Okay, I think that's all we have. Okay. Lindsay, Always thank happy to, you to so very much. It was so helpful. And I think Lindsay's going to share her information. Are you going to share your information, Lindsay, or no? Yes. Yeah, you can share. I can just put it. Do I, is it best to put it in the chat? Or uh, you know what? Yeah, put it in the chat okay. and I will stick it in with the YouTube link when I send okay. it out. Okay. Sure. No problem. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you all so very much for coming. And you know what? Take the rest of the day off because it's going to be beautiful today. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to get ugly, but today's going to be beautiful. So hop on that Harley, Connie, and go for a ride. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you all so much. And Lindsay, thank you again. You're awesome. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.